Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge that we're in seated in the Coast Salish um, land and the traditional territories of the Musqueams, Wallachians, Slave, Slave with Two Nations. So um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Young Sun Min. I see some students here and I see some colleagues. Um, partly we're sitting back because the screen is just the angle that kind of strains your neck. So um, Young Sun, if we're sitting back there, it's not because we have a bad attitude. <laughs> Okay, um, Young Students in Residence um, here. Uh, last night we opened our show downstairs. It's actually a project that the second years and the third years um, participated in. And uh, um, I'd encourage those of you who haven't seen it to come back and see if the gallery is closed right now. Uh, and Young Student has two videos, Pangap Sunida and On the Road, um, which pertain to North Korea, and she'll speak briefly to that tonight. But uh, ostensibly, uh, she'll give a kind of overview today from 1980 to 2012. And then she's doing a lot of, um, she's doing a lot of talks uh, just, um, and studio visits, and so she'll be able to be available to the students to give um, um, you know, more nuanced view of her particular projects or certain kinds of questions. So Young Sun Min, um, as many of you know, is an artist based in LA. So she was born near Seoul in 1953, the year the Korean War ended in armistice. I think that's quite significant in terms of um, her work and, and the concerns of her work. Uh, Min immigrated with her mother and brother to the US in 1960 to join their father very specific reasons why they couldn't join their father earlier due to immigration laws, etc. And grew up in Monterey, California. And she received her BFA degree from UC Berkeley in 1979 and a postdoc at the Whitney Museum's Independent Study Program in 1981. And um, it was a very exciting time uh, during that period. And she was uh, friends with um, many of you well, perhaps not many, but some of you know uh, the, the very important artist, Teresa Hapdoncha. And Judith Berry was here um, maybe last year. And so I uh, thought they were all friends and went to school together during that time. So after three years uh, as a visiting faculty at Hawaii University, she lived in New York City for nine years before relocating to Los Angeles, where she's been teaching at UC Irvine for over 20 years and is now Professor Emeritus. Uh, that's significant, too, in terms of the time she spent in New York City. Um, very important time uh, in terms of insurgent multiculturalism, and I'm sure uh, we'll hear more about that from young soon. But in fact, she will also be speaking to that in a seminar that she's doing with the third years next Thursday, Tuesday. So Min's practice, inclusive of curatorial projects, I'm not sure whether you're going to get to curatorial projects here, are you? Yeah, two, thank you. Um, engages interdisciplinary sources and processes and examinations of, of issues of representation and cultural identities and the intersection of history and memory. Among her numerous grants and awards, Min received the Fulbright Senior Research Grant, a COLA Individual Artist Fellowship from the City of Los Angeles Cultural Affairs Department, Korea Foundation Grant, Anonymous was a Woman Award, and the NEA Visual Art. Uh, war in, in new genre. She's exhibited nationally and internationally, has curated numerous exhibitions. And um, uh, I think Young Sun and I first met, I'm not sure, we're not sure, <laughs> in Ber at Berkeley maybe, uh, but we were definitely in one of the earliest shows of um, Korean diasporic uh, artists and Korean artists at the Queen's Museum in the early, like maybe 92, 92, 93, with um, now um, uh, Jane Farr, who was a fantastic curator that recently passed away. Uh, and since then, I've followed Yongsun's work. We've crossed paths here and there. Most recently, I think um, we had a pretty significant show together at the Seoul Museum of Art uh, that looked at um, two decades of our, our practices. 
So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Vancouver and to have some time with us and to enjoy you and also uh, hear about your practice and your thoughts. And so thank you. Come on up. Jindy Yu enough for her um, inviting me here, and uh, I don't know what kind of thoughts I have left, but you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, she has such a great reputation everywhere. Um, I know people, several people in, in Los Angeles who studied with her, and uh, her reputation goes far and wide, and uh, I don't understand why she is so highly regarded. Got us some sense of it just being in the class. Um, so I'm just going to be, you know, it says that period of time, and it, it's I'm old, <laughs> so there's a, I, I have a lot of slides, and I just want to make sure that I get through it. So I'm going to read from my notes and kind of stick to the reading, um, pretty much because I don't want to, you know, it just takes that much time because I when I talk except extemporaneously, I just kind of tend to wander and so on. So I'm going to stick to the text and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, and I hope you'll bear with me. Um, I'm going to show two sets of card points. And I was trying to blend them together, but it just like it was too time consuming. So the other, uh, this uh, initial uh, card point will show uh, a bunch of slides, and then the next PowerPoint uh, was is based on um, a talk I gave earlier this year on North Korea. But I'm just going to be showing um, my uh, slides of my work based on North Korea, and um, uh, and, and it just gives it a bit more uh, in context of North Korea. Um, so I hope you can bear with me about that. Um, your I'm speaking loud enough that you can all hear, right? Yeah, great, thank you. Okay, so um, I like to start my projects, uh, my slideshows, you know, with uh, a couple of images that I find a bit curious. So this image, um, Nanju Peck, um, who's considered the godfather or the father of video, is pictured here wearing Korean traditional clothing with a hat made of horse hair, like a handsome yangban, uh, or the upper class background, um, that he probably was, uh, looking quite classy. Um, this image can also be considered by some to have an exoticizing appearance that's, that's accompanied by my doing uh, with a seemingly orientalizing quote of his that I placed next to his image. Um, here he speaks of having to be entertaining at all times, um, an exaggerated compensation to overcome the difference and the asymmetry of power that exists in the art world. Korea now has more soft power, um, but it remains questionable how uh, Korean artists might feel uh, the pressure to extend themselves beyond their Korean or non-Korean identity to distinguish themselves in the international art market. Um, this image, I don't know if you could see at the very top, um, it has the words, um, it has the words, um, my uh, perfect USA. Um, and so this image, uh, I took the photo in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City, that's official, um, and on one of my trips there. Uh, I was struck by this building that rose high above a myriad of power lines, but more by the statement, perfect USA. I don't know what this building is about or when it was built, but I wondered why these words in terms of possible meanings in this reality, um, in which nothing is perfect, certainly not countries, um, and considering that Vietnam is a communist country that beat the U.S. 
in the last of the official Cold Wars, can this statement represent a charm, a charm, charm offensive to the U.S.? Are they trying to be nice to us, or what? Uh, these are just two of the many images that have me pondering. Um, I'm going to run through uh, my early works quickly and not talk about them in any detail. My art practice of nearly 40 years have been varied, including art making, independent curating, and teaching. Uh, these early installations were done in the early 80s after my MFA work. Uh, stuff were on the walls, telling stories in a manner of, manner of deconstructing narratives. Uh, my personal favorite during that period was the French filmmaker Jean Godard. Godard's early use of jump cuts, his blend of fact and fiction, and his quote that a photograph is not the reflection of reality, but the reality of the reflection, had an enormous impact uh, on my early work that translated uh, these ideas into sequential stills that could suggest narratives and multitude of discourse. Um, my first exhibition in Soho, NYC, this dates my show, uh, because it's now just full of boutiques, um, showed Half Home, um, that's pictured, uh, that explored hybrid identity. Um, my first public art show um, at City Hall Park in New York City was Groundswell. Um, that's the place we're going to tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, at the name's sake. Um, it's a three-part sequential play on various house forms in metal to suggest the transformation of an inner house form to a home for a community of people. Um, and then this piece, Make Me by Sex My Portraits, uh, and cuts out alliterative word, uh, words that play with Asian American stereotypes. Objectified other turns the corner in this show, but it could be any of the other sets. This installation um, was held in the coolest place during the summer uh, in New York City, uh, inside the Brooklyn Bridge Anchorage, located in Brooklyn, um, with 50-foot-high ceilings. I chose to set my four-part series inside these two niches facing each other. Um, here I use the house form again, and a spinning globe to suggest uh, a similar theme of, uh, as the groundswell piece. Um, this is so ugly, <laughs> a slide, but anyway. Um, decolonization um, was triggered by the UN Charter that declared the 90s as the era of decolonization. This installation tried to question this narrow technical definition of political decolonization and raise the residual effects of colonization uh, with a country uh, like Republic of Korea uh, that had experienced colonial period but was now a liberated country with a democratic government but was not only experiencing uh, growing pains but in many people's views, colonized by the U.S. who had been their liberator. Um, but perhaps another insidious form of colonization is when people internalize aspects of colonization. On the floor was written the word colonize. I inserted in this image um, the tree element that was on the wall, not captured in the main image, and it looks really terrible. But then the room at the Bronx Museum was shoddy anyway. Um, this uh, was the first instance for Jimmy's work and my work to be in the show together. It's the 
the one that was held at Queen's Museum and was called um, um, Across the Pacific, and it traveled after Queen's Museum to the Hall Museum in Seoul. Um, the, and, you know, as the name of the show, uh, it was uh, dubbed the first Korean diaspora exhibition. Uh, my bride figure here uh, bowed on a regular basis uh, as the audio coming from underneath the figure played, where is, where is my decolonized desire? Where is my demilitarized sexuality? Um, and on the carpet, uh, the, um, the black um, carpet that leads up to the figure, it alternates the gold words with um, deep red words that just gets absorbed in the uh, photographs. But it had yin principles, the yin yang, the yin, uh, female principles, and uh, it has words such as destructive, negative, feminine, acid, dark, cold, and hope, the last word. Um, DMZ crossing, or um, Xing, um, whichever way, uh, was a rotunda structure that you entered into when you can read the text on the tall glass sheets that, and to the left here, uh, shows the detailed, detailed photographic images uh, seen under the text that's been etched. Uh, the central mirror structure functions like a panopticon. Uh, the stories of the various communities that are the refugees of the war in Vietnam, the Vietnamese, Cambodian, Laotian, Hmong, um, and they alternated with my own uh, stories as an immigrant. Um, Global Garden, as I call this piece, uh, is a percent for art project for a public art public library in Queens, New York, where lots of immigrants live. It's one of the most incredibly uh, diverse community. Um, I chose eight popular flowers in the world that floated amidst uh, the map of the New York boroughs. Uh, this large window uh, was sandblasted and located in the children's area of the library. I'm kind of going through all of these really fast, but it's OK. Um, I was invited. Uh, this is the first cur curatorial project I'm talking about. Uh, I was invited to organize an exhibition about the Korean diaspora for Gwangju Biennial, um, uh, located in the southernmost province of South Korea. Basically, I wanted to find out where um, Koreans had settled outside of Korea and why there. Um, I was in my, uh, among the estimated six million uh, Koreans who live uh, in different countries in, of the world. This project took a closer look and selected artists from these five cities. Almaty, Kazakhstan, uh, Los Angeles, to stand for the US, Osaka, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, of course, and Yanji, uh, that's in China. Uh, and these were, we chose these because they were quite diverse uh, historically and culturally as well. Um, and additional artists were selected uh, for the film video um, uh, section of the uh, exhibition. These cities uh, were chosen for their historical, geographic, and cultural differences. As a project that represented both uh, an ethnographic and spatial term, the best part of that project was the singular experience to travel to these far-flung cities and meet the various members of communities as well as the artists. Um, in retrospect, this project was overly ambitious for such short periods of lead time, 
but at least I attempted to challenge the center periphery oppositional construct by placing all the selected artists together, um, all together in the exhibition, and also, repre also present the polymorphous constructions of subjectivity in relation to place and its particular history. Uh, a day-long day symposium uh, called Predicament of Place uh, brought together an interdisciplinary group that included, among others, David Kahn, I don't know if he's here. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, and Henry Sang, another person who teaches at Henry Carr, uh, as your, yeah, in the uh, symposium. Um, this project uh, brings you back to Canada. Um, because this project was held in Montreal at Oberon Gallery. Um, a partial view to your left uh, is Will uh, Flower, 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 Flower for Peace that involve three rooms of which you are seeing uh, the entrance and looking through two windows. Um, of, no, into three room, two rooms. Um, at the far end, a video is visible that is a direct feed of the opposite room where Ellen D'Souza and I are in bed playing the roles of John and Yoko. This project uh, simultaneously recognizes uh, their 1969 bed-in uh, in Montreal, uh, where uh, as well as the invasion of Iraq um, under the second Bush presidency. Um, later, for the uh, Pacific Film Archive uh, of the Berkeley Art Museum, we screened uh, two gurus in drag, uh, which is what uh, John once referred to himself in Yoko, um, that traced um, our history as John and Yoko. Uh, we ended the film uh, with me mimicking Dylan flipping, you know, that's the image on the bottom uh, of the right image, um, which traced, that traced our history of, uh, wait, no, I'm sorry. We ended the film with me mimicking uh, Dylan flipping cards, word cards, to the song uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Uh, with a cameo appearance of Yvonne Rainer playing the role of Allen Ginsberg, who appears in the background in the documentary um, Don't Look Back by D.A. Pennebecker. Um, I hope to be able to show this video uh, in one of the classes I'm doing with the third year students. Uh, it's kind of fun. Um, and let's see. Um, this collaboration with um, two artists, Abdelali Darouche, who worked on the video, um, and Alan D'Souza, who worked on the photography, uh, Projectory was included in the 7th Rangjou Biennial, or Biennale, uh, led by Oguyen Zor as the artistic director. Um, this installation invokes the 1980s uh, Rangjou uprising and massacre in taking up another politically, la politically laden historical act of protest as its subject. Um, but Edward Said's infamous and controversial act of throwing a stone from Lebanon into Israel in 2000 that quickly became a viral image. The image of a man who was one of the most famous and prominent Palestinians uh, frozen in the act of throwing a stone became an instant media sensation um, and the vortex of an avalanche of reactions and a heated debate that is perhaps epitomized by these queries. When is throwing a stone free discourse? How does ideology influence the limits of discourse? The debate uh, and Third question, among others, uh, what are the perceived limits of protest? What are the limits of discourse? Um, the debate played out uh, at NY's New York City's
Columbia University where uh, Saeed was a professor and nearly got him fired. The debate was raised um, in the installation project while the baseballs uh, pitched during the installation served as a metaphor for the relentless act of throwing. Uh, it was important to us that the size of the baseball match the size of the bende dots uh, of the enlarged uh, photographic image. I'm going to show a short kind of rough video um, just to give you another sense of it. Oops. It's supposed to play. I don't know how to get to it. How do I trigger it? I just want to... <laughs> to the Guangzhou Biennial, uh, Alan and I were also included in the third Guangzhou Triennial in China, uh, southern China, that had openings a day apart in September. So we spent two weeks in Guangzhou putting up that installation, then we went quickly to Guangzhou and spent a week or so in installing that show, and then we went back to Guangzhou to attend the opening. Then Alan left to teach, and I returned to Guangzhou alone to attend the opening. Um, at that time, I was teaching at uh, UC Irvine that had uh, fall quarters that started in October. <laughs> anyway, but it was just absolutely crazy. Um, the curators uh, for Guangzhou wanted a work related to our bed-ins um, like the ones that we did at um, uh, Montreal. But um, instead, we built a bed-like platform that had a uh, 60s medley of porn projected on it. Um, that got us in trouble, the porn, because one of the workers um, reported it to 
higher echelon of that museum. And uh, so they censored it for the opening um, when everybody, all the curators, you know, from traveling places and the, um, and the government officials were there. And, and the, they just preemptively just censored it so that they couldn't, I couldn't see the whole thing played. And, uh, and then they said, no, we promised we're going to play it the next day. And uh, it didn't make much sense, but it did. Um, so additionally, um, in addition to the, the porn that was playing, um, we built, a, uh, we could hear in Chinese uh, and, in Ch uh, and in English um, the sound that was emanating uh, from the bed. Uh, which was words, and uh, so it was one of uh, one of them was um, the heart of the floor, higher higher the ping, ping pong balls bounces in bed, or if you want a rainbow, you must put up with rain in bed, or the best way to get rid of the enemy is to take him as a friend in bed. Um, or you are better off not knowing how sausages and laws are made in bed. <laughs> so in other words, these we rely on old jokes of adding in bed to our favorite fortunes. Um, and you know, these were all translated into Chinese. And so there were different speakers that played English or Chinese. Um, the curtains were printed uh, on the outside with clips from the climax scene of um, uh, Antonioni's uh, classic film, Zabriskie Point, uh, which features uh, the blow-up scene. Um, oh, I, I also should say that you know, these scenes are seen from a balcony level, that's, um, so you can just look down on the whole thing. But, Ideally, we just want people to go in and experience it firsthand. Yeah. Um, this is the, uh, the other, uh, I've curated a number of shows, but this is the, the second uh, kind of major shows, major show. Uh, Transpop Korea and Vietnam Remix was a transnational traveling exhibition curated by Viet Le and myself. Uh, 16 artists from Vietnam, Korea, and their respective diasporas in the United States uh, featured works that explored the intersections of history, trauma, and contemporary popular culture. Uh, Transcop focuses on uh, the two countries' shared history of a highly accelerated modernization process with militarized roots and the Cold War. Uh, during the war in Vietnam, Republic of Korea was the second largest uh, foreign military and economic presence in Vietnam after the US, and over 300,000 Korean troops served there, uh, with over 5,000 killed, uh, and approximately 24,000 uh, skilled workers, Korean workers, um, there in exchange for substantial aid. Uh, the financial boom for their involvement in the war played a catalytic, catalytic role in Korea's development, laying the foundation for what is now the world's 12th largest economy. In Vietnam, this accelerated modernity is evident in the breakneck speed of current uh, economic development, as well as its entry into the World Trade Organization. The legacy of the Cold War can be found in the large Korean and Vietnamese communities in the States. Uh, these are several of the uh, reviews that we've received uh, in Korea, in Seoul. Um, and uh, since the late 90s, uh, Vietnam and Korea have have witnessed significant development of popular culture, fostering uh, greater cultural proximity local, locally and abroad. 
In terms of the exhibition title, the trans, the trans refers to the key themes, translation, transnationalism, transgression, um, while the remix refers to the prevalent pop and cultural practices for creating new possibilities uh, in the act of appropriation and reconsideration. Um, after all, the exhibition concept was conceived during the lunch of Bude Chibe, uh, which is army-based stew, um, a Korean goulash-like holdover from an impoverished Korean War days when surplus canned meat such as Spam wooled. Um, a form of culinary remix. This project reflects our interests in the dynamic pulse of transnational and inter-Asian cultural flows as well as twin forces of uh, media and migration. Um, the exhibition started in Seoul, uh, then moved to Saigon, where we presented smaller versions of the show as the two, uh, as the two galleries, San Art and Gallery Quinn, had smaller spaces, plus s several works were, um, were censored by the government reviewers who regularly review all the works uh, a month in advance. We got around the censors somewhat uh, when some of the artists presented talks in a relaxed setting. We also brought the show to Southern California at UC Irvine. Uh, our last show um, of Transpop was at Yoga Buena's Art Center in San Francisco, uh, which has a lovely large space. Um, so the large video piece at the far end was The Farmer and the Helicopter by Din Le. And the adjacent smaller image uh, is a video, 29 Palms, by An Le, uh, no relation to Din, uh, who had a show here recently, uh, last year. Um, and in the far left uh, is uh, E. Youngback, uh, that's uh, Angel Sol Soldier 1, that was uh, shown uh, in the Korean Pavilion of Venice Biennale in 2011. And the sculpture uh, on the right-hand side uh, was by Tiffany Chung, who was also included in last year's Venice Biennale. So those are just some of the pieces that are visible. Uh, but we have two other rooms also. Um, on the floor is Camouflage by Tran Long, um, who hails from Hanoi. Uh, we also produced an uh, issue of the prestigious a journal in Korea, Bol, Bol uh, that could engage more fully in the interdisciplinary uh, discussions. And likewise, a day-long symposium was held at UC Berkeley during the run of the show across the bay in Yoga Buena. Uh, now we're going back to my artwork. Um, Rise Romantic Fiddleheads, uh, Fiddleheads was created for the 12 windows uh, and entrance of the California African American Museum in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm particularly fond of this project as it afforded me a chance to use uh, vinyl in creating abstract platforms. Um, the conceptual basis of, uh, for the design of this project was inspired by rhizomes, uh, which refers both to a particular plant, uh, type of plant life, as well as a philosophical concept developed by uh, French theorists uh, Gil, uh, Gil uh, Deleuze and Felix Ben. Um, I was intrigued by Deleuze and Guattari's rhizomatic theory that emphasizes non-hierarchical and relational multiplicity. That rhizomes neither begins or ends, but is always in the middle uh, between things and in the process of becoming. Um, movement. Um, which uh, this reflects uh, the rise uh, in interest in Asian culture in general, and in this case, uh, in the history of Asian music uh, to Asia and beyond. Uh, the arrangement of records, CDs, mural, and small mirror circles play homage to Hiroshi Hen's um, P. 
piece, The Way, um, a dramatically different version uh, of this work had, was commissioned for Asia Society in 2002 uh, before Smith College Museum purchased the work uh, and it premiered in Smith College Museum in 2008. Uh, then it was on display again for the collection exhibition in 2012 and I was had the opportunity to reinstall and change the circle uh, on, the, on the left side um, from a flat green orb uh, to a mix of colors that I interpreted um, as charged yet serene. Um, yes, and this is another piece um, detailed uh, of the um, movement. And that little uh, CD disc shows, um, has a reproduction of um, uh, Cho Young Pier, uh, this one, and this great pop artist. And it was his first album that shows, represents uh, the players in uh, you know, space outfits. That's really great. Um, Yes. Oh, and uh, you know this piece um, is when I got an award from the city of Los Angeles that entailed an exhibition. So I showed uh, this piece, and uh, the vinyl text on the floor excerpted uh, email exchanges among my friends debating whether to live in Korea or uh, the States, um, and it's uh, and this text is visible amidst the projected loop of turbulent waves. Um, the, let's see, the video uh, was shown on TV with various characters searching for love in all the wrong places. Uh, most of the split image uh, images were appropriated from various Korean TV dramas uh, and from a film by the Japanese filmmaker Ozu. So it's a uh, low and high culture in the mix. Um, this is the last image of this um, PowerPoint. Um, the last image, um, this, is a, this shows a, a project that uh, Asia Culture Center archive and research undertook. It's just one of a vast establishment. Uh, it's just one of a vast establishment that uh, took root in Hangzhou, Korea, uh, separate from the Hangzhou Biennial, um, with official openings in November 2012. Um, ACC um, is a huge is huge with several large exhibition galleries and archive and research alone is a very ambitious uh, project of a broad purview that en encompass over 15 subjects such as pop music in the 80s in Korea to typographic diversity in East Asia. I was selected to represent Asian American history in the US uh, focusing on my work and collection. The curator selected par paraphernalia uh, books and video for the ACC permanent collection. It was uh, displayed in four uh, table displays, one bookshelf and uh, uh, video and uh, a part of the booklet uh, on the walls. Okay, now I'm going to move on to uh, the other uh, North Korea piece. Uh, let's see, where's my... Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, you know, as I said, this piece, uh, I mean, this PowerPoint will show uh, some of the... Uh, pieces that I made uh, with North Korea on my mind, or influenced by North Korea. Um, 
1995, I visited uh, the DNC for the second time, and DNC, you know, they have tours to the DNC, um, which can be uh, attended by me, but not other Koreans. I mean, I'm a, a, Korean, a U.S. citizen, uh, but Korean Koreans proper, uh, South Koreans uh, won't be able to go. Um, but uh, Koreans, Korean Americans, and other uh, non-Koreans can, can go on this uh, trip. And uh, anyway, my relatives in Seoul took me to Odusan Unification Observatory, which opened in 1992 and is located in Paju, uh, which is located in the northwestern corner of South Korea. When you go to the roof, uh, you can see the north. It satisfied my desire a bit to see a bit of the north, ever so present, but really of nothing much except for mountains and some buildings. Um, Han River and Injun River meet and flow to the west. Uh, powerful binoculars north, uh, directed north, are on the roof. Uh, some people say that they could see cranes and few individuals. Uh, when you go downstairs, uh, there are various displays. Um, so I was surprised to see the, uh, these displays that are set to be from the north. Toys, underwear, and lots of clothes. I couldn't, I couldn't, could not understand how South Koreans would be interested in North Korean clothing, which then, by 1995, seemed a bit dated, but not that different from the South. Uh, it's questionable who looks more dated here, the South Korean spectators or the mannequins in, in the last of the four-part uh, series. This entire exhibit revolved around the observatory's ethnographic notion of exoticizing others. There, are, there were two gazes at work here, South Korean and my Korean American gaze, as Konglish text overlays the four images. Where, 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 our home, our home. I hope that they change displays by now, exercising greater care so that blonde mannequins aren't part of the mix, but the disturbing sense still applies. You see where the uh, blonde mannequins <laughs> are? Yeah. Um, the Bridge of No Return, um, the small bridge, can be seen as part of the DMZ tour. I've known about this bridge of no return for quite some time, intrigued about how a bridge exists that cannot be crossed. Historically, at the end of the Korean War, this bridge was a site where prisoners were exchanged. Prisoners from the north could return to the, to, uh, to the north, um, and those from the south could return to the south. Um, whereupon the bridge became sealed with no more crossings. An oxymoron, it represents an ideological absurdity of the division of the country. Um, my Bridge of No Return is a room installation that was made of uh, double eight foot tall metal studs uh, that made cur curves to represent the yin-yang shape. Uh, the, the structure was further uh, covered with metal grid wire. Uh, the underlying concept behind the, the use of metal was my exploration of magnetic forces that attract and, uh, and repulse the opposite. Um, division and difference may spur desire and interest, while tragic repulsion is inexplicable, uh, inexplicably plated with hope. Uh, these are two sides are, that are blue and red, uh, like the yin-yang symbol of the ROK flag, but translated in baby blue and pink in this work.
Um, every print, um, every image printed in blue or pink were double printed um, in full color on the back side, um, as visible in the small insert. Um, for the pink and blue images, I chose promotional pictures, but the reverse sides are full color images that function like documentary images from the two sides. One tragic event that happened in 1995 was the explosion of a Sampoon department store that was a major store um, in a wealthy part of town. Uh, but I saw after uh, the fact that the rubble that were represented in full color pictures and fragmented text throughout the South Korean side. In between the walls, a uh, small space uh, was created that I call a third space that viewers who come up close to read the words or to hear the tick-tock of the clock hands could see the full color images. Uh, the clock hands refer not only to time, but also to a sense of direction, as the, geogra as the geography and the sense of place uh, plays an important role. Um, in late 1998, I was one of three colleagues, uh, including Elaine Kim and Chung Choi, Choi, uh, who were invited by the Overseas Compatriots Bureau of the DPRK, Defense uh, of Democratic People's Republic of Korea, um, in their effort to establish better ties with uh, overseas academics. Nearly half of our itinerary was standard obligatory fare, such as numerous visits to monuments, museums, Juche lecture, lecture uh, uh, Man Yong Day, Children's Palace, uh, the Kum Susan Memorial Palace, um, that's where Kim Il sung's uh, and since his death, uh, Kim, Kim Jong Il's mausoleum lies. Um, the other half was our, uh, was, uh, our choice, uh, such as a visit to the DMZ and Kaesong, uh, the large spectacular film studio, uh, farming collective, uh, and the Mount Day art studio, and, um, uh, and the city of Wonsong um, on our way to the illustrious Kumbangsan, or the Diamond Mountain, um, on the far uh, lower uh, east corner. Um, we particularly wanted to go to the uh, Kumbangsan, um, the Diamond Mountains, because we knew that Hyundai Corporations had organized South Korean tour of Kumbangsan to start in September of that year. So we wanted to beat them, the South Koreans that is, um, so that um, uh, San would be virginal, so to speak. Uh, this image is one of my favorite images from the Diamond Mountains that reminds me of how we walked all day long to the top of the mountain um, on a rainy day getting soaked thoroughly and we were the only ones in the mountain except for a small, for another small party of Chinese. Um, Uh, in 2007, uh, this is the piece that's downstairs in at the Alvin uh, Gallery. Uh, Gyeonggi-do, Gyeonggi-do Museum of Art invited me to join a large group uh, exhibition called National Highway Number no. One. The premise of the show was this highway that existed at an earlier time before the division of the country. Um, that spanned the whole peninsula along the west coast and what it might stand for now. On the road, northern exposure is inspired by Chris Marker's visual poetics exemplified in his essays, uh, essay film, Sans um, as well as the revisionist assessments occasioned by the 50th anniversary of Kerouac's seminal beat novel uh, entitled On the Road. Contrary to popular romanticized notions of carefree spontaneity associated with the beats and the discovery of the joys of being on the road, it took Kerouac 
10 years to write a novel, an arduous effort to produce literature. Um, it took me as long uh, a period to question my motivation for doing this project and wonder what I might gain from looking at the images again uh, much later. The video is based on footage I shot during uh, a day-long road trip uh, between Pyongyang and the DMZ uh, during our visit. The audio consists of my voiceover narration ruminating on the persistence of Cold War legacies uh, that is embedded in the North, uh, North Korean landscape and the questioning of returns uh, intermingled uh, with a mix of Korean and Eng English banter from us three uh, U.S. passengers um, with that of North Korean hosts, um, all meeting the fleeting glimpse of the vistas beyond. Uh, the subtitling in Korean was done for the exhibition at the Kyungido Museum of Art, and Spanish was added later for the 10th uh, Havana Biennale in Cuba. Okay, back to Pyongyang. Um, this is a view of the grand Kim Il-sung Square, which is close to the uh, Taedonggang Hotel, um, a small hotel where we chose to stay, as opposed to these high-rise that many of the tourists stay at. Uh, this is where most of the grand parades and mass games are held. That large Kim Il Sung Square. Uh, across the uh, Taedong River stands uh, the Tower of Juche. Uh, I point out this tower because there is a statue, a small statue, relatively small, smaller, you know, below it, um, uh, and that represents the Workers' Party's monument. And you see the uh, blow up of it um, on the left hand side. Um, here's another image of the uh, Workers' Party monument um, and, the, and the other images, uh, one of them shows the evening celebration of, of, of uh, the monument during um, last October's celebration of the 70th anniversary uh, with the torchlight formation made by the participants I'm tickled to find um, the clock formation because I made my own version of it. Um, I also did a clock-like formation of it on a table. I was quite impressed by the symbol of communism that added the scholarly brush uh, as the way that most people thought of it as, as a scholarly brush, but I prefer to think of it as the paintbrush. Um, that adds just what's needed in the mix of agriculture and industry. In my work, the second hand is swift, uh, constantly moving and in the flux as culture is known to do. Um, okay, so this is um, composite image um, uh, that tells us about the back. Uh, the first image on the left-hand side, um, on the upper left, um, uh, tells about the background source, and the next one uh, shows an installation of the image, and the rest of this composite shows clips from the video uh, on that um, And this, the, this image that talks about the background, um, and it was a commemorative stamp that I found in a hotel located in Yangbyan, China, close to the border with North Korea. The commemoration so shows 63 men who were imprisoned in South Korea for their spy activity and who refused to sign a statement that renounced Juche. And you know what Chuche is that talks about self-reliance. That's one of the major principal uh, concept, idea that uh, North Korea, DPRK, is founded on. Um, 
And uh, in 1998, and a year later, South Korean President Kim Dae-jung declared an amnesty for long-term prisoners over the age of 70. When they were free, they actively uh, petitioned for repatriation, and in 2000, as part of the June 15th North-South Joint Declaration, 63 of the former prisoners were permitted to resettle in North Korea. Um, after I did the installation in Seoul, oh, uh, that does, doesn't matter. Actually, never mind. <laughs> um, so you go back to the, the whole composite show. Um, the video footage was shot uh, on a rainy day, rainy morning of women dancing to celebrate the election of Kim Jong-il. Uh, at the entrance to the building, election building, uh, in a village close to Kyunggangsan, um, a magnificent mountain range located in the southeast corner of North Korea. In addition to the women singing Bhagap uh, a popular welcome greeting, uh, the audio's uh, sarcastically strident reference to Dylan's rainy day women is meant to add a sense of rupture to the entire scene. Can my installation invoke Walter Benjamin's admonition to seize hold, seize hold of a memory as it flashes up at a mountain, at a, at a moment of danger? Okay, this is the last piece um, of the whole talk. Um, when I was in Old Havana, uh, in 2009 to participate in the 10th Havana Biennale, I stumbled uh, onto a little building that was called the Asian Museum, and, um, and I went up to this se uh, the second floor, and I happened upon this painting that was painted in North Korea uh, to be given to Castro uh, on his 60th birthday. Um, and so, you know, that's why you have Castro and uh, he was sung together. Uh, this painting uh, uh, was as faithfully copied from my photos, and 500 copies were on display at a gallery and were to be taken by viewers, um, to be, uh, as in Felix Gonzalez Torres. Um, um, mode, or also in the spirit of letting a hundred flowers bloom, a la Mao. I was curious how this image of two rogue, rogue, lead, oops, two rogue leaders uh, would be accepted now. In my title, I pay homage to Cuban filmmaker uh, Santiago Alvarez, the director of Cuban Newsreel, who made a film of the funeral, of Ho Chi Minh funeral. Alvarez's title, uh, 79 Springtimes of Ho Chi Minh, um, and the 79 uh, refers to uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh's uh, age at the, at the time of death. Um, and that film was made in 1969. Um, was uh, at what, and that film was at once highly experimental, yet completely accessible, uh, registering an unmistakable personal vision that reverberates with such vitality. And I hope that you may get a chance to see the work sometime. Um, and so I ended here um, because, did I end it, um, did I run over the one hour? Okay, so this is a good place to end. So, so you know, if you have any comments or questions, um, I'd be happy to answer whatever. And, you know, if you... Oh, this is really the last image for the whole talk. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if you did get any feedback about how this image was received. Did you ever hear Thomas and yeah. did people take them? Oh, um, uh, yeah. They did, actually. Did you ever hear anything back? Uh, 
you know, I think, you know, uh, the, the responses vary from um, the printers of this. These were Korean printers, and they kind of didn't want to do it initially because like, they didn't want to do anything with Kim Il Sung on the, uh, on the image. But I had to explain that um, this was a historical e event, and um, uh, that's why I'm doing it. And I finally got to do it. Um, and so the printers and uh, the actual the print shop, they were sort of a little bit unsure. Um, but I think the, it's played at two different, I showed it at two different uh, galleries in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, I think among artists, they were already kind of trained. <laughs> Uh, and so there wasn't any trouble with them, and thought, oh, well, this is kind of interesting, you know. But yeah, I just kind of accepted. Um, and some of them, you know, had framed it. I just, I just thought it would be just like a poster uh, that would just be hung up on the wall, like pins. But they framed it, and I thought, wow, this is kind of interesting. Um, but. You know, it's 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 kind of uh, interesting how uh, this image. Uh, if I maybe if I played it, I mean, if I played it, you know, if the the galleries were in Koreatown, for instance, um, I might have encountered just just a more varied responses. But these were in specifically, and that was one was in a, a art school. Uh, gallery and then the other one was in a commercial gallery. But these were in mostly non korean neighborhoods and so I got away with it. Yeah. It's David. <laughs> uh, you started off at uh, your, your talk with images of when you first started making work. Uh -huh. And you said that you were um, making stills, and then it looked, it looked like some of them were, uh, were reproduced very inexpensive. And so I'm curious, I just have this image of going to a Cape Town in downtown LA, and then going to a shop, you know, and then seeing these plastic. But, but that, how that would be received by the pedestrians. If an image such as this, or let's say, like, I'm just mashing it up here, uh, you know, that uh, Obama and Castro did, did not meet. Right? They met with Raul, but not with you know. So, setting up a situation where these different figures um, were put together. And Context was shifted rather than a social gallery or a. You know, also, uh, I, I try to look for uh, any, any evidence where um, they had actually met Castro and, uh, and they never met actually. And I think that Kim Song um, was actually uh, had a fear of lying actually. And so <laughs> he didn't, they never met. So this was like a fictionalized meeting. And, uh, the, the joining of the hands, which is a bit bigger than it would be more than an But uh, so it's an idealized, sort of idealized image. Um, but yeah, and uh, I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, Obama uh, just went to Cuba. And um, uh, it's, it's, but you know, the fact that they display it uh, in this small museum, you know, uh, which downstairs has a little library and uh, the rest of it, it has little display cases, uh, display rooms that actually, when I was there in uh, 2009, they had a show on Yoko Ono's sister, um, who was a friend in Cuba, and she had shown a large room, 80s. Um, 
but upstairs was just like um, all these uh, different um, gifts and vases and other stuff from Asia. And so I don't you know what's up with that. But I don't know. I'm not sure I'm answering your question. Well, I'm just thinking that. Yeah. Museum that existed at one point uh, that's still trying to 
exist, but the leadership of that community was so conservative. I used to be on the board, I just had to quit because they were just not doing um, uh, any of the political shows that I thought they were engaged in. Um, and uh, it's just a So I, I've lost touch with Korean community in one sense because I'm not as directly involved in the community anymore. But I also think that uh, it's kind of shifted a bit because uh, in the current uh, millennium, 2000, 2010 to 2015 or 16, it's just uh, shifted quite a bit to more Koreans. I don't know if they use Korean American anymore uh, on quickly because a lot of the Koreans who live in Koreatown uh, might consider themselves just as Koreans living in the US, uh, the more recent immigrants and um, so thank you. Yeah, sorry, you know, it's just kind of possibly changing. Um, and if they are more recent, um, uh, you know, they're, they're getting informed, they come with them, uh, informed of the comfort women issue, for instance, uh, and such that uh, Glendale, one of those little cities right next to Los Angeles, part of Los Angeles, part of uh, county of Los Angeles, has uh, the monument uh, for comfort women uh, right there. Uh, that's the same. Um, Sculpture monument that um, exists um, in, in Seoul that's right across from the Japanese embassy. And so that's the that's the monument that Japan is so anxious to get out there to move. And uh, and uh, Papine, the president, had uh, said that you know she agreed to it being removed, and but she never consulted. Uh, the organizations, uh, popular organizations that uh, um, established that, that uh, monument. And so they're just fighting every single day to kind of make sure it doesn't get destroyed and removed on the site. But Japanese uh, government and their uh, contacts in the States are trying so hard to kind of remove it from did you raise your arm or were you just doing exercises? Oh, question two. Maybe this one's not your question again. I don't know if this is a part of what you Were you sure? I, I was wondering if this is maybe one of the things you might be thinking about. Is when you show me your pieces in the uh, group exhibitions or two or five person exhibition where there's artists from different communities or people in the Does the exhibition actually act as a place then for messy dialogue? Tough messy dialogue that needs to happen. I didn't know if that was part of what you were wondering that. The exhibition itself could be that kind of space where some of that started. And did that happen, or does that often happen for you in your work? Does that go Yeah. Because those conversations are really so important. It's great. You understand what you're saying? But when you do have this, you know, I think that one of the discussions that. Um, in the established by me coming and um, um, having a show and other discussions of uh, protein, just about the two applications. But you know, a lot of shows you do it and there's no talk um, planned around it. And so just go in there and do it and then leave, actually. And so there's no discussion necessarily. And uh, that's just kind of sad. But there have been a few that have had discussion component to it. Well, I remember the Queens. Uh, um, oh, 
Oh, you there was one. Was, I wasn't able to attend. That was in Austin. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, there, that was there for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Early days. Was that made from members of the Korean American community? I think Helen Lane was a filmmaker as well on our community. Yes. And everyone's Korean American.